The following video was recorded on location in my state-of-the-art office in the corner of my first floor apartment. If you like what you're about to hear, please like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell in the upper right corner. Hey, Josh, it's Greg from Paradise Lost. Hi, how's it going? Ah, uh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite a nice day here in England for once, so not too bad. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Well, uh, thank you for taking time to do this interview. No problem at all. No problem. Well, awesome. Well, uh, I believe this is my third time being able to talk to you. Uh, w once back, uh, a couple albums back for Paradise Lost, and then at uh, Maryland Death Fest a couple years back to talk about Valonfire. But it's exciting to be able yeah. to talk about the brand new album from Paradise Lost, Medusa, which is coming out through Nuclear Blast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, th that was. It's, it's interesting working with Nuclear Blast because uh, we. I was surprised how few of the people who work with there we'd ever met. You know, we think we'd have crossed paths with them more, but it wasn't until we recently did a press trip that we'd met some of the people that work there. So it's uh, it's all new to us, really. And what has it been like so far with uh, switching over to Nuclear Blast? Um, it's been pretty seamless, really, because, um, I mean, Century Media were, were a, a good label as well. I mean, I, we had no complaints. It was purely because our, you know, our contract was up with Century Media, so we were looking around, and um, Century Media were also being taken over by Sony at the time, which was even the people who worked there were a little bit dubious as to how it would affect relationships between bands and labels. So, so I mean, Nuclear Blast was kind of the obvious choice, and um, it all seems really good so far. I mean, we, we've, it's very close-knit, very, uh, you know, for such a big label, it's very close-knit, and the people who work there who we've been in contact with are, are um, genuine kind of fans of metal music, which is always good, because we've been on a couple of majors over the years, and uh, it certainly makes a, a complete difference when you're dealing with people, men in suits, you know. Oh, very much so. But I can at least say from the fan perspective, with what you guys have done with Medusa, it is an amazing debut album for Nuclear Blast and easily one of my favorite Paradise Lost albums today. Wow, that's uh, that's uh, quite, quite an endorsement, man. <laughs> <laughs> So, with uh, 2015's The Plague Within being such a, a huge return to form of sorts with Paradise Lost, where did you guys know where you wanted to go with Medusa? Uh, well, usually after we've done a record, we have no idea where we're going to go next. We leave it quite a long time and then just sit down and think, right, what do we like right now? But with this record, it was slightly different. It was because um, we signed to Nuclear Blast. Nuclear Blast actually get, gave us quite a tight deadline. Um, so we already kind of knew which direction we wanted to go with for the new record. And that was purely because of the final song we wrote for The Plague Within, which was Beneath Broken Earth, a very slow, doomy song, which turned out way better than we imagined and we really enjoy playing it live um, so we kind of the idea was to hey why don't we do a full record of that kind of thing you know like a full on doom metal record so um, that was kind of the only brief we had at the start when we were thinking about writing a record we just thought let's make it really slow and really miserable and, uh, and possibly a little bit retro you know yeah, and that's what I really appreciate it. I mean, what I loved about The Plague Within was uh, all the versatility throughout the entire album. I mean, it showcases everything that I love about Paradise Lost. But with Medusa, I mean, when you're really showing off the slow, doom, uh, sometimes death metal feels of everything that's going on throughout the album, I mean, it just feels like such a definitive Paradise Lost album. And it, it feels like it's just such a great throwback to the early days of Paradise Lost, but also maintaining a 2017 sound of where you guys are now. Uh, well, I mean, if, if I had to describe it to a Paradise Lost fan before it comes out, um, stylistically, I would say somewhere between Gothic and Shades of God albums. So, so yeah, definitely early days. Um, but we couldn't have really written a record like this back then because it also incorporates everything we've learned over the years um, you know it takes experience to be able to maybe uh, make songs like this flow so well especially something like the first first track on the album that's like eight and a half minutes long um, but to me it doesn't feel like it um, it feels like half of that because it kind of flows very well um, so, so yeah there's like I'm, I'm basically just reiterating what you're saying but yeah there's a lot of early 
reference points on there and a lot of classic paradise lost from the early days but um it, it's compounded by everything that we've learned in the whole time we've been together you know yeah and that's that's definitely the thing i mean if this album were to come out around that time of like gothic or something like that you know it's like it might not have had the same feeling but knowing where you are now with Paradise Lost, with all the experiences that have gone on throughout the band, uh, all the side projects you guys have been a part of, uh, it just feels, like I said before, just so definitive, and it just has like such a great classic sound, but modernized for 2017. Well, it, it just feels like the right time to do a record like this, really. I mean, you know, I, I mean, we couldn't have done this record, say, five years ago. It just wouldn't have felt right. It wouldn't have sat well in our discography. It wouldn't have been honest. Uh, but right now, for this moment in time, it's it kind of just feels right because this is exactly what where we're at right now so and, and it came off like i say it came off the back of um one of the slowest songs we wrote on beneath broken sorry on a uh, played within so we it just feels like a, a very very uh very integral uh record to us it's just it's something that came extremely naturally and that's a horrible way to put it but um usually we have to think about these things and argue a little bit about what direction we're going in and we didn't really have to do it with this one yeah, and that's always important, too. I mean, as long as everyone in the band wants the album to go in the direction, the, the right direction like this, and I'm, I'm glad to see that that was the case with Medusa, you know, just, like, focusing, focusing on the slower doom side of Paradise Lost, making everything have, like, this great epic feel behind it. And like you said, it starts off with an eight-and-a-half-minute track, but it does not feel like an eight-and-a-half-minute track. I mean, it feels like it just goes by so fast, which is funny with it being such a slow song. Uh well, it's something that um, I, I have a real problem with with a lot of doom doom metal is when 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 songs generally go over six minutes, um, unless it's really craftily written, it can get boring. Um, and this, I think there's very few songs that get past that. Um, and and hopefully we've managed to achieve that with this. I mean, when we told the label um, that the first track was going to be eight and a half minutes long, they, 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 they didn't really think that was a good idea. Um, but when they heard the track they realized that it couldn't really be anywhere else on the record and it was almost like going through a uh, almost like Paradise Lost discography in one song almost you know um, so, so, so so they got it in the end but I can understand from a new label and you're trying to hit them where it hurts straight away on the first song on the album and we come out with this eight and a half minute song that starts with like funeral doom tempos you know it's uh, it's, it's probably not the not, not the most commercial thing to do from their point of view, I guess, but they know where, they know that we know what we're doing, I guess. Yeah, and that shows that Nuclear, Bl Nuclear Blast has a lot of faith in what you're doing. I mean, like, uh, it, you know, off the bat, you know, like, it does sound like it's something that might not work out with putting an eight and a half minute track, but they had enough faith in you to believe in what you're doing, and honestly, it was the, such a great choice. I mean, I love the way that the track order feels on the album. It feels like such a complete album with the track order that it's in and starting it off with fearless sky i mean it was a great way to start it yeah it's, it's something that we we give a lot of thought to um because we come from a we come from a time it sounds horrible but we come from a time where artwork and what starts on the a side and what starts on the b side and how many tracks and the length of those it all counts and um, yeah we thought long and hard about how many tracks were going to be on this album what length they were going to be and what tracks should start the a side what tracks should start the b side how it flo how how everything flowed into one another so and especially when you're doing a lot of slow stuff you have to kind of balance the dynamics correctly um to give the album a good enough flow so it doesn't get too tedious if you know what i mean yeah, and that's the great thing about also having a project like Valenfire, who also put out an amazing album this year. I mean, being able to explore both the doom metal side with, of Paradise Lost this year, but also exploring the death grind a sound that is Valenfire. Yeah, I mean, we pushed it. We pushed it even further with Valenfire. I guess it's going to be the rest, last recording for Valenfire, so we really wanted to uh, kind of push the envelope a little bit further and make it extremely raw sounding. You know. To, <laughs> Um, so, so everything's to the nth degree on that new Valenfire record, really, I suppose. Uh, you know, that we've, we've gone faster and slower and messier and everything. It's, it's just, uh, it's, it's the complete opposite of Paradise Lost. I mean, in essence, you know, there's 
you know, with this, I, it's written by the same people ish. You know, I, I you know, I did most of the writing for Malfoy and Paradis Lost, but it's a very different feeling I think you get from the two. You know, I, I think Paradis Lost is the grown up me and Malfoy is the child in me. You know, it's very messy and chaotic, and uh, Paradise Lost is is kind of very uh, structured and uh, adult, if you like. You know. Yeah, I I think it's very important. I mean, especially when you have uh, different artistic visions than uh, just one project where you want to explore other sounds that you, you don't necessarily want to bring into another band or you feel like it can't yeah. be fit into a band, you know, like when you're able to do that with another project, I mean, it really helps with creativity for all the projects that you're a part of. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I ended up accidentally after having to write both the new Valenfire and the new Paris Lost at the same time uh, because of the scheduling with Nuclear Blast. So um, it was very difficult and I wouldn't really want to have to try and do it again, but it was quite rewarding because I'd spend a couple of days doing Valenfire songs and I'd spend a couple of days doing Paris Lost songs um, and, and so on and so forth. And it really kind of helped me focus more on what the essence of both bands should be. You know, it helped me draw a clear line in the sand um, you would have thought it would have been the opposite that some material would have blended into the other and, and vice versa but it didn't it made me it made me really really get a, a, a good focus a good clear focus on what, what the essence of both bands should have been and with that I mean of course with uh, Val and Fire being out now and uh, Paradise Lost coming out next month uh, what are the plans for both bands coming up after the release of Medusa uh, well it's, it's already fairly busy I mean because uh, it's festival season in the in, in Europe every weekend we, uh, we kind of fly away and do two or three festivals in different countries like tomorrow I go I don't even know what country I'm in first but I do a Paradise Lost gig <laughs> then the day after I'm in Czechoslovakia with Valentine and then the day after that I'm in Belgium with Paradise Lost again so, so we do these things every weekend with festivals and then September 1st we have an album release show in Germany for, for um, Medusa where we play the album in its entirety and then I go on a, go to Dubai I think and then there's a two week tour for Valentine European tour and then an eight week tour for Paradise Lost um, and then Australia with Paradise Lost in December and then next year we're already trying to line up tours for Valentine and Paradise Lost in America um, but I don't know how how far along that is, that the road those uh, negotiations are yet. But that's that, that's the plan anyway. Oh, I'm, I'm I'm glad to see that things are already uh, coming together that quickly for everything. I mean, uh, being able to tour around the world, both bands. Uh, I mean, hopefully. Uh, things get lined up in the right way with both Valenfire and Paradise Lost because I'd, I'd love to be able to check out both bands again. I mean, having the experience of seeing uh, both bands, whether it was at Maryland Death Fest or in Minnesota, I, I really love what you're able to bring into both bands and both bands just have such a great sound live and it's great to see that both are going to be getting the full dedication and promotion for the brand new albums that they deserve. Well, I mean, let's hope so. I mean, I, I, I was kind of shocked that I didn't do more. Pro I did virtually no promotion this time for uh, Valenfire in the US. And last time on the Splinters album, I did a lot more and I was kind of shocked um, that I didn't do more interviews. But I don't know whether that was because of the Sony takeover because all the, or because the, the, the people who work there changed. I know that Nick, I used to deal with Nikki Law at Century Media before and it's changed to somebody else now. So, so maybe it was just because it was an interim period period with, with the label that they kind of didn't do that much press but it seemed you know I, I, there still seems to be a good buzz about it you know in the press yeah it's a, easily my favorite Valenfire album the dates I mean I just I really love the extremes that you guys went to with Valenfire and it's great to see the great balance in that with uh, Medusa you know it's just like when I'm looking for the more heavy more extreme side I can throw on Valenfire when I want something uh, more of that uh, doom, funeral doom, gothic sound, I can go to Paradise Lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, it's, it's, I'm, I'm kind of getting out every possible part of musicality that I like to listen to through those two projects at the moment, you know, so it's uh, it's kind of nice. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely good that, um, you, you know, that someone was kind enough to uh, realize Valenfire for me, you know, like Century Media did, um, because it would have been something that I'd have probably just 
pontificated about for years and never actually got around to, you know. So it's uh, it's nice that I got to do that, you know. Uh, you, you mentioned earlier that uh, there's going to be an album release show for Medusa where you're playing the whole album in its entirety. How do you feel um, while it's uh, doing a whole album in its entirety live? Uh, well, I mean, we, we've only ever done it once, well, sorry, once before for a release show, but um, we, we've done it for um, nostalgic purposes a couple of times, you know, like we did, uh, we played the Roadburn Festival last year and we did the Gothic album in its entirety uh, for that festival and... Um, I wasn't too interested in doing it at first because I thought, well, you know, this, this seems like we're becoming a legacy act or something. But when we did it, I kind of realized it wasn't about that because it wasn't like we were doing a tour of that record or anything. It was purely a one-off where people who never got to see us back in whenever it was, 91, um, got a chance to see it all. So it's, uh, I, I can understand it for certain reasons, you know, but I, I prefer to, when you do full albums, uh, you know, full album in its entirety to kind of show, it should only be one or two shows. It shouldn't be any more than that because then you, you really are in danger of becoming a legacy act, which is something I'm very, very aware of not wanting to become. Uh, yeah, I mean, that raises a, a very valid point, especially with... Uh, what people consider a very classic or seminal album. I mean, if you only focus on that, then uh, people will have that feeling that it's just a nostalgia or a legacy act. But it's cool to see that Medusa is going to be getting that, uh, showing where you guys are in 2017 and showing off everything that you're capable of right now. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're really looking forward to it. I mean, we've just been, we've just started doing the rehearsals for it as well in and amongst festivals, and it's, it seems to be going really well, I think. I mean, th this album was definitely written with a view to it being played live. I mean, there's nothing that can't be pulled off with a plum live, you know, because sometimes you'll write a record and there'll be the odd track where it's like, well, we can't really do that song justice live, you know, because maybe the, the, you've, you've worked on it too much in the studio or you've added parts that you need more musicians to pull it off, you know, but uh, on this record, it's kind of stripped down. So it's fairly, it, it's fairly straightforward for us to pull, pull it off and do everything to, to sound exactly like it does on the record, you know. Oh, definitely. But, you know, again, you know, it's it, it's great to see that it will be getting a, uh... Uh, promotion live that it deserves and it's it's great to see all the festival shows and t upcoming touring and everything that's going on right now for Valent Fire and Paradise Lost and um it's been a tremendous honor to be able to talk to you about everything about both bands and but of course uh talking about the brand new Paradise Lost album Medusa which comes out September 1st through Nuclear Blast I've gotten to check it out over uh, the past week and I've just fallen in love with it more and more and it's easily becoming one of my favorite Paradise Lost albums if not my favorite Paradise Lost album to date wow. and I'm, it's an honor to be able to help promote it oh wow thank you thank you Josh I mean I, I mean, I, with this record when, we, when a couple of people first heard it because we, you know the interim period when you record a record and before anyone hears it it's always a kind of a tense time but we knew this record wasn't as immediate as the record before it you know we, we know that it's a grower um, so it's dependent on whether people give it that extra time, you know, to, to, to let it grow on them. And um, it seems like you have, so thanks for that. Oh, not a problem. Well, uh, uh, sadly, our time is up, but uh, I th thank yeah. you once again for uh, taking the time to be able to do this. It was great to be able to talk to you once again and be able to promote everything that you got going on. And I'm really looking forward uh, to the release of Medusa when it comes out and everyone gets a chance to check it out. And Hopefully, in America, I'll be able to get to see you guys uh, next year, whether it's with Val and Fire, Paradise Lost, or both bands. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, I'm asking anyone who, who cares to put the word out and uh, be on the lookout for, you know, get get us over there, get, get either band over there, because we're, we're available all next year for touring the States, and we're looking into certain tours now, but any anybody that can uh, put the word out there, then we definitely want them to do it, you know. Mm -hmm. 